What is going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy a Docker-based application to AWS's Elastic Container Service. Um, so I figured before I get into how to actually do this, I just wanted to give you a quick little overview of what exactly we're gonna be doing. I do want to point out in advance though that you do need a couple prerequisites for this tutorial. Uh, the first one is you need the AWS CLI installed. And the second is that you need the CLI configured with a user that has some very specific specific ECR and ECS permissions. And I'm gonna leave the policy template in the bottom of this video in the description so that you can create that user yourself. And if you don't know how to set the CLI up, check out my other video. I'll put that one in the description section below on a tutorial on how to do that precisely. Um, so with that out of the way, let's just go over what we're gonna be doing. Uh, so we're gonna have a Docker file, a very basic Docker-based application. It's gonna be a Flask application uh, that basically just hosts a um, endpoint that gives you random pictures of cats. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in a moment. Uh, once we do that, we're gonna build that Docker file up. We're gonna go and create a repository in ECR. And then we're gonna upload that Docker image to ECR. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and set up ECS. Uh, now there's three main components. There's a cluster, a task, and a service. I don't wanna go into too much about what these three things are. So let me just give you a very quick little summary. A uh, cluster is just basically like a logical grouping of hardware resources and a task is a template that contains metadata about how you should deploy your docker container onto a machine and this is where you set up things like memory cpu uh, port mappings environment variables and all that jazz and a service is more for uh, advanced use cases that require uh, for instance auto scaling uh, they may require a certain number of containers are always up at a certain time uh, they want load balancing they want to do deployments so blue green deployments uh, stuff like that. So they're a more comprehensive solution than tasks. Uh, so that's a little bit about what these three things are. In this video, we're going to be using the cluster and the task. Um, so I think that's about it. So let me go over now to my IDE in Visual Studio Code and show you the application that we're going to be deploying. All right, folks, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. Uh, let's just take a quick little look at this application just so you get familiar with what's going on. Uh, it's a very simple Flask app. We have a Docker file in here that uh, just sets you know, the Python version, the working directory, dependency install, and it's exposing port 5000. Uh, then we just have our app pi file, which has a bunch of URLs to different pictures, and it just serves up a random one when you hit the um, just base endpoint. Uh, and all this other stuff we don't really need to care about. So we're gonna go down to the terminal over here and we're just gonna say docker build dash t and we're just gonna say test. Uh, we're gonna build that image out. So let's actually just run that now. Uh, we're gonna say docker run dash d, we're gonna say publish. Uh, we're gonna expose the port 8888 on this machine and we're gonna point that to port 5000 on the container and we're using test of course. We got our success code back there. Uh, so let's just check out localhost 8888 and this is basically what we got. And if we refresh this a few times, we can see uh, the cat pictures are randomly changing. Uh, so that's what we got going on with this basic application. And this is what I want to deploy to the cloud. Uh, so instead of it being localhost, this is going to be an EC2 machine uh, at the end of this video. Uh, so let me close that down and let's just move on to the next step now. Now the next thing we need to do is essentially log in to ECR. Uh, and this is really where the user with the correct permissions comes into play. So I have this uh, command copied and ready to go. So you can just take a look at what's going on here. So we're saying ECR get login password. Uh, we're specifying the region and we're just saying Docker login, username's AWS. Uh, this is my account ID, 755, yada, yada, yada. And this is again, the same region that you specified up here. And I'm gonna put these commands down in the description section in a GitHub gist so that you can kind of copy this and follow along at your own leisure. Um, so I'm gonna click on enter now. Now, if you have any kind of error, you're gonna get that error now, but I already have the correct permission set up. Um, so obviously you see for me, login succeeded. So at this point, we can actually go and create our ECR repository because we're logged in uh, to AWS ECR. So let's just go and do that now. Um, so I'm here on my AWS console and we're gonna go to ECR, Elastic Container Registry Service. And sure, let's click on get started and let's just call this thing tests because that's what I named my container anyways. 
leaving everything default here. And we're going to go ahead and click on create repository. Now let's go back to our terminal and actually upload the uh, image that we just built onto AWS ECR. Uh, so again, I have this command already copied and ready to go. So I'm just saying uh, I'm going to use the test repository and I'm going to mark it as latest. Again, this is my account ID, the 755, yada, yada. And again, the region here is US East 1 for me. And then we're just repeating the, um, just the name of the repository and also it being latest. Now press enter there. And so that's just going to tag your image but you actually need to upload it as well using the push command. And so again, I have that copied and ready to go. So you just say Docker push and the same thing, press enter. And if you have a slow connection like I do, this may take a little bit, um, but I'll fast forward it right now. All right, so that finally finished. So we can just go ahead and close the IDE now. We actually don't need this anymore. Everything else we do is gonna be in the console. Um, so we're back on ECR here. Let me just click on refresh and we, we can check out what changed. Uh, so if we click on this guy now, we can see that we actually have the latest image tag and it should say like the size. Yeah, so it's a couple hundred megabytes. Um, so we're just gonna copy this URI here for our um, image. And I'm just gonna put that aside on my notepad over here because we may need that in another step. Okay, so that's it for ECR. So now we're gonna go to ECS. So I'm gonna click on this guy over here on the left. Alternatively, you can go to the services bar, just type in ECS and click on it. And this is essentially what the home screen of the ECS uh, area looks like. And here I was kind of experimenting a little earlier. Um, so what we first need to do, as we kind of mentioned in the early uh, roadmap video here, is we first need to create a cluster. So let's go ahead and do that now. So clicking on create cluster, what do we got here? Uh, we're gonna set, select the second option, EC2 Linux plus networking, because we actually want to create um, EC2 machines as part of this cluster. Now going down to next step over here, at this point we can define um, a bunch of different options. So let's just say uh, this cluster is called the cat app uh, cluster. You can call this whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. Uh, from here, since we're going to be using EC2s, it's asking for what uh, type of uh, pricing or provisioning model. So we're just going to say on demand since it's uh, easier for me. We're going to be using the T2 micro or T3 micro actually, I think it is, are the free tier eligible uh, so that we don't have to pay anything. We're going to leave all this other stuff default. Um, we don't really need to set anything here. Now for networking, we do need to make some adjustments. So we're going to use the default VPC that's available with any AWS account. So you have a VPC associated with yours. You may not know that you have it, but it's there, I assure you. Um, so we're going to click on the first subnet here and then we're going to make sure you select this option, auto assign public IP, set that to enabled. That's actually important for later. And the security group, again, we're going to use the default security group that is associated with this AWS account. Um, now for the container instance IAM role, um, you can click on create new role or if you have one already, that's fine as well. Uh, at that point, we really don't need to do anything else. We're just going to click on create down at the bottom and let the cluster create itself. Uh, so this may take a moment or so. I'll fast forward this if it takes a little bit too long. But essentially what's happening right now is that it's uh, creating the cluster itself. It's creating the IAM policies that are needed for it. Uh, it's also bringing up a T3A micro instance. So if we go, uh, if I duplicate this and I go to the EC2 section of AWS, uh, EC2, we should be able to see that an instance is coming online in a moment here, and there it is. Uh, just as I went to it, it got brought online, and you see that it belongs to cat app cluster, and it's currently in the initializing state. Uh, so that's how these two things are connected. Your cluster is going to create uh, hardware or create resources for you so that you can deploy containers onto it. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave this open for now because it's gonna come in handy a little bit later. Um, so here we can see this is finally done. So now we can just go to view cluster and just take a look at what's going on here. So if we just click around here now, um, obviously we don't have a service set up. We're not gonna be doing that in this tutorial. We don't have any tasks set up because we, we haven't created that part yet. Uh, but we do have an EC2 instance, so that should show over here, and there it is, it's the EC2 instance. Uh, so let's go to the task section now, uh, up on the top left here, task definitions, and create a new task definition for this project. Uh, so we're gonna do this based on EC2. Fargate is like an abstraction of EC2, so you don't even have to worry about hardware if you're using Fargate. Uh, but for us, I wanna use EC2. So we're gonna click on that, and we're gonna go to next step, and we're gonna create a task definition name. So um, let's call this ECS cat app 
demo task, demo task, uh, task role, none, that's fine. Network mode, we're gonna leave that in default, that's fine as well. Um, for the amount of memory, we can just leave this as default, um, like 128 MB is fine. I think it's got like a special notation you need to give here. Uh, yeah, so like 128, maybe capitals and maybe case sensitive. Uh, let's just say one, ooh, what's going on here? You know what, let me just put in one. This is gonna be short lived anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, now let's say one vCPU over here. And this is the point in which we actually add the container. Uh, so we specify rules regarding that container. So go ahead and click on add container. Now we need to specify the container name. So ours is called the um, cat app container, right? And this is why I copied the uh, ARN of our ECR uh, repository from the previous step. So let me just pull that out really quick. I have it on the side here. So now if I just copy that in, um, we're pretty much good to go at this point. We do need to do some port mappings magic because uh, if you recall, the container is on port 5000. Uh, so we need to add the um, mapping of the port that we want to expose um, through the Docker container here. So we're gonna put in port 8888. That's gonna be the local port on the EC2 machine. And the container port is gonna be 5000. TCP is fine. Uh, health check, we don't need any advanced nonsense. Uh, so we're just gonna say add down here. And where are we? Okay, so cats app uh, container, it looks like it got set up. We don't need an elastic interface. We don't need constraints. We don't need basically anything else here, uh, but you can take a look at some of these options if you're interested in them. I'm gonna go ahead and click on create now. All right, so that uh, task definition got created successfully. Now we need to go back to the cluster and actually uh, deploy a task. So we're gonna go back here and on the tasks bar, uh, we're gonna say run a new task and we're gonna say EC2 and let's say this is the one that I just created, ECS cat app demo task. Uh, we're gonna say revision one, which is the latest. We only want one task here. You can run more than one on one machine if you want. That's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna use one for this example. Uh, we're gonna use AZ balance spread. That doesn't matter for this case. Let's go ahead and click on run task. Uh, and at this point, the application that is loaded in ECR um, as the Docker image is gonna be deployed onto this machine. And you can see here, that's exactly what's going on. We see that it's currently in the pending state and it's gonna eventually go into the running state. So let's keep an eye on this. Uh, that's weird, why did it uh, just disappear? All right, so we can see that it's currently in the running state. I actually made a, a small mistake in the previous step when I defined the uh, task definition. I put in the wrong URL, or I guess there was a typo for the ECR container. So I ended up getting a container that uh, you can see here couldn't start correctly. Uh, so that's kind of just shows you what can go wrong here. So at this point, it should be uh, good to go to go and check out what the application does when we hit it on port 8888. Uh, we should get that cat app, right? So let's go and get the public facing IP address of this EC2 machine that's hosting this application. Uh, so here's the public DNS. We're gonna take this and we're gonna copy it and we're just gonna paste this in on port 8888. Now, this does not work right away. And you may ask yourself why, and the reason is because our VPC currently has configuration on it that's preventing any traffic from coming in. Um, so we need to go ahead and fix that so that we can actually expose port 8888. So go back to the instances section. Now, if we go down to security groups, security groups, now there's a security group that's associated with this machine. So, and so this security group basically has rules associated with it such that it's not allowing any incoming connections from the public internet. Uh, so we need to go and fix that and expose port 8888. So let's go ahead onto the left here and click on security groups. And so this was from a previous little experiment, but our default one that we're gonna be using here, actually, was this one? When was this created? Doesn't say 25157. No, this was from a previous one. So if we go ahead and click on this, um, and we look at down here where it says edit inbound rules, what we need to do is add an additional rule to expose port 8888. Um, so let's say, yeah, custom TCP, that's fine. We're just gonna say port 8888 and we want it uh, available to the public internet and that looks good. So that can be called from anywhere. So now if I go ahead and click on save rules, let's actually do that for um, IPv6 as well. So 8888 
and then uh, this one, I believe it is, and click on save rules. So now we just basically opened up our VPC security groups that it can accept connections. If we go back here and click on refresh, this should work. And there you go. Everything is working correctly. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot about ECS and how to deploy applications to it. Make sure to check out the other AWS videos on my channel. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next one. Thanks so much, everyone, and I'll see you next time.